What is clinical psychology and is it a good career for you? Stick around, let's talk about it today on this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy and personal academic mentor, Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh, and also your resident clinical psychologist. So because of that, I feel well prepared to be able to talk to you today about what is clinical psychology and is it a good career path for you? So let's go ahead and get right into it. If you happen to actually be interested in going to graduate school and either getting a terminal master's or getting a doctorate, like a PhD or a PsyD in clinical psychology, please, definitely take into consideration becoming a member down here of Publication Academy, where we've got modules developed specifically by me to help you get into top grad schools in the United States as well as abroad. Everything from writing your personal statement and diversity statement to preparing your academic CV to just finding the best programs as well as the best supervisors uniquely tailored to you, and then interview prep. Everything we've got it. So go ahead, take a look. We've got a free trial. Go ahead, check it out. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about clinical psychology and whether or not it's a good career choice for you. If you're considering one of these careers in behavioral health, it could be as a counselor, it could be as a social worker and so forth, and you're particularly curious about what clinical psychology entails, this is the video for you. So what is clinical psychology? Well, it's a branch of psychology in general that deals with a diagnosis, assessment, and treatment of mental illness and psychological distress. And we work in a variety of different settings. We can also work with individuals, we can work with families, we can work with groups of non-familial individuals, and our goal is to be able to understand their internal dynamics and problems and help them to be able to improve their mental health and because of that, improve their overall quality of life. So what's the role of a clinical psychologist? psychologist, you may ask? Well, we're trained to be able to diagnose and treat a wide variety of mental health problems, including things that you may have heard of in the past, like depression and anxiety disorders and bipolar and psychotic disorders like schizophrenia and so forth. These are things that maybe you've heard of before, and they're certainly things that are utterly fascinating, regardless of whether you want to become a psychologist or not. You know, we use a variety of different techniques to be able to address each one of these different types of disorders, and at the end of the day, we call this evidence-based best practices. Now, we can use everything from stuff that you've probably heard of, like CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, to radical behavioral therapy, uh, to something referred to as psychodynamic therapy, uh, to be able to help these individuals understand and overcome the challenges they happen to be facing. Now, there are literally hundreds of different types of psychology in terms of different psychological techniques. Finding the one that's best for you, to be honest with you, it's going to take a little while, but that's okay, because in addition to doing your doctorate, whether it's a PsyD or clinical psychology PhD, you're going to be doing continuing professional development throughout your career to be able to specialize in whatever area really strikes your fancy. What I have found personally is that over years of clinical practice, you're going to get more and more passionate about helping specific subgroups of individuals. One of my favorite things about being a clinical psychologist, though, is that over time, you can pivot. You can spend, you know, let's say a few years focusing on this specific area, a few areas, a few years focusing on this particular area. This is really exciting in terms of the flexibility of these degrees. And in addition, as a clinical psychologist, you play a critical role in conducting research, teaching in higher education settings, and also consulting with other types of healthcare professionals like psychiatric nurses, medical doctors, and so forth. Uh, you can work in settings that I've worked in in the past, including hospitals and clinics, schools. Obviously, you can start your own private practice. Uh, you can work for government agencies. You can travel the world doing this kind of work. It's pretty exciting, all right? So how do we actually get there? Again, education and training is absolutely key. You should know that becoming a clinical psychologist requires a significant amount of education and training. You know, After you end up earning a bachelor's degree, usually in psychology, but it can be from something else as well, individuals typically pursue a graduate degree like a PsyD or a PhD. Like I said, those take usually a median of between five to seven years. It's a long time. And then after that, you have to do here in the United States something called the EPPP, uh, as well as to be able to seek out state licensure. So this is one of these situations where it takes a long time, but is it worth it? In my opinion, absolutely. You know, during their graduate training, clinical psychologists like myself, you know, we receive rigorous training in a wide variety of these techniques, but also theories, research methods, and so forth. We complete a doctoral dissertation, which really equips us to be experts in our relative field. 
fields. And also, we really try to be able to prepare people in higher education, because I'm a professor as well, uh, to be able to complete a clinical practicum, a clinical internship that is what we call APIC approved, meaning it's approved by the American Psychological Association. This, as well as different clinical rotations during your doctorate, are going to give you that hands-on experience working with clients, but in a supervised setting. And I think that that's really important. So all that said, is it a good career, right? So, I mean, I'm going to give you my own experience, obviously, but first 10,000 foot, it, it's challenging. It's a rewarding career that offers a lot of opportunities, uh, not just for professional growth, but to be honest with you, for personal growth. That's definitely something that I've experienced both during my education as well as thereafter. It's a wonderful community of people to work with. Uh, within academia itself, you know, publishing peer-reviewed journal articles. I've, you know, currently, as of the time of filming this video, published 94 peer-reviewed journal articles in top journals, as well as published four books. It's something that's very, very fulfilling, I would say. And it definitely also provides a meaningful way to be able to help individuals and families. And it's also a rapidly growing field. So you've got good job prospects and definitely competitive salaries. Some people think that clinical psychologists are making, you know, ridiculous amounts of money. And if it is the situation where you're working in particular settings, or you have a thriving private practice, which, shocker, when you get out of grad school, you're not going to have. There are already usually dozens, if not hundreds, if you're in large cities, of incumbent psychologists and other kinds of behavioral health professionals who already have sterling reputations, and usually word of mouth uh, is a very effective way for people to be able to get referrals, uh, and even more so usually than something like you know social media or just digital advertising on something like Google AdSense. So you just need to accept that if you want to go that route, it's going to take some time, just like any other business. I would say, you know, three to five years to really get the thing started, and then seven to ten years until it really grows into maturity. you got a full caseload. In many cases, you're accepting insurance, at least to be able to start. If you're not accepting insurance, you can make way more money. There's a lot to be able to go into. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this stuff, by the way, because we go into it often in all of our different, you know, hundreds of videos at this stage. So, you know, it really requires, if you want to be a psychologist, a strong commitment to helping others, uh, a deep understanding of human behavior and emotions, and the ability, I, I would say maybe most importantly, to handle difficult and emotional situations. People get fascinated by these types of disorders. Um, but you need to understand that usually, let's say if somebody's undergoing depression or anxiety or having obsessive compulsive disorder and these sorts of things, I've worked with obviously clients and with all these different conditions, what you will end up finding is that oftentimes it's not that these individuals, you know, randomly ended up developing these things. Usually they ended up, just like I did, I had clinical depression um, for, for years and years. Luckily it's been in remission for forever now, but I definitely had it, so I get it. Um, and I will tell you right now that it's a situation where usually there's a major trauma that ends up happening. For me, it was uh, having uh, negative experiences in graduate school, particularly with my advisor and so forth. And it was really brutal. I won't go into it in this video, but I do go into it uh, in others. Um, and, you know, 38% of men, 44% of women develop clinical anxiety or depression during graduate school. So you need to know if you're going to go in to this, not only are you going to learn about this, likelihood is really high during that master's or doctorate, you're going to experience some of these things yourself. It's a demanding field. You're going to have long hours. You're going to have tight deadlines. It is emotionally draining. You're opening yourself to vicarious trauma. Anytime you're going into a career field, I want you to remember that I want you to go in with your eyes wide open, okay? It's very important to me. Like I said, if you really want to become a clinical psychologist, check out publicationacademy.com. You can also schedule one-on-one -on -one consult sessions with me to be able to help you with your career planning and how to be able to successfully apply to PsyD and clinical psych PhD programs down here at www.gradschoolapplicationcoach.com. So if you're interested in helping others, really understanding human behavior better, and you're willing to take on those different demands, Clinical Psych could be a really great fit for you. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to share this video with your friends, your colleagues, your students, anybody that you think could benefit. Make sure to hit that like button. I hate when people say smash the like button, but you get the idea. It helps the channel, am I right? And then also subscribe. Really appreciate you. Comment below, and I will see you guys in the next one. God bless you. Peace. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.